Elon Musk is in the news um, for an amazing reason. Let me show you this here. So let's start on the right. Judd Legum says, Oh no, Elon Musk, who is worth $229 billion and made $36 billion in one day this week, doesn't like the idea of taxing billionaires. Musk paid zero income tax in 2018. So, uh, you know what, I'll read that whole thing for you, but first just look at Elon's response on the bottom left. So this guy says, here's how you can write to your legislators and say, oppose this new billionaire's tax that's being floated as part of the reconciliation package. Musk responds, exactly. Eventually, they run out of other people's money and then they come for you. So the point that Elon is making is, yeah, you shouldn't support a billionaire's tax because eventually that'll hit the person who's making middle class wages. Let me explain to you why that's absurd. When billionaires aren't paying more in taxes, who's picking up the slack? The working class. So it's actually exactly backwards. It's exactly backwards. You want the wealthy to pay more so you can ease the tax burden on the working class. It's called a progressive tax rate. Every developed country has that. Now, unfortunately, in the United States, um, because of specifically the 2017 Republican and Trump tax cut bill, for the first time in history, you had the working class paying a higher effective rate than billionaires. So we have a regressive tax system in this country in some respects. In some ways, it's not even just a flat tax system. It's a regressive tax system. If you uh, earn a salary, if, if you earn a wage for a living, you pay higher taxes than some of the wealthiest people in the country. For example, the capital gains rate, which is the money that you make on investments, that rate at about 20% is lower than if you're some construction worker and you make like eighty dollars or $90,000 a year. You can pay more working a, a normal job, getting a normal salary, you could pay more in taxes than somebody who sits on their ass all day and lets their money make money for a living. So you have basically professional gamblers in the stock market paying less in taxes than people who bust their ass all day every day. And don't even get me into, you know, the army of accountants and lawyers and experts and specialists who work for the ultra wealthy to find legal loopholes so they pay nothing in taxes. So I will, uh, let me just read a little bit of this for you. Um, dear Senator or Congress or Congress member's name, so this is just a you know template of what you can write to oppose the billionaire's tax. Uh, I expect you to oppose the widened proposal to tax unrealized capital gains. Although the proposal targets billionaires and not myself, the government of elected representatives have a track record of, what does that say? Scope creep when writing new taxes. I'm not even going to read the rest of it. On that alone, it's the most ridiculous thing I've ever heard. Um, the argument is literally, I'm not opposed to taxing billionaires in principle. The real thing I'm concerned about is the tax increases are going to trickle down to regular people. Which again, as we established, the exact opposite of it is true. When billionaires pay next to nothing in taxes, who picks up the difference? The working class. That's exactly what's happening in this country. So they get the they, they flip it exactly on its head and understand something, guys. Everything I've said to this point, I'm not giving anything theoretical. The argument they're making is theoretical. Hey, if this happens, maybe this will happen. No, no, no. I'm just pointing out the empirical historical reality. Don't take my word for it. Go, go look at it. Go look at the numbers. We've covered the th articles on this show endlessly about this exact topic. Okay. Um, so now, let's talk a little bit about the Elon Musk thing. There was a big expose in ProPublica recently. Now, Judd Legum points out here, as Musk is out there decrying increasing taxes on billionaires, Musk paid zero in income tax in 2018. Now, you might be saying, well, how the hell is that possible? How is that even legal? Well, there's actually a, a well-developed strategy that's used by billionaires on this front. So what very wealthy people do is they go to a bank and they borrow against their stock for their living expenses. And that's oftentimes cheaper than selling stock and paying taxes on it. So the strategy is called buy, borrow, and die. It's an actual strategy to preserve wealth if you're mega wealthy. So when you die, all of those unrealized, never taxed capital gains are wiped off the books for your heirs. 
So do you understand that? You never take money out. You go to a bank and borrow against your stock, and then you never have to pay taxes. It's a giant scam. It's a giant loophole. Anybody who looks at this with a sober, reasonable mind realizes these people are giant tax cheats. They're tax cheats. Now, you're earning a, a regular wage, and you're paying your taxes, and you feel like a sucker. They get to legally dodge all these taxes with these clear scam loopholes that are put in there because the wealthy have bought the government? That's the reality. So just to give you guys uh, more of an understanding of just how bad it is, the wealthiest people in the country pay next to nothing in taxes. So the true tax rate for Warren Buffett, for example, 0.10%. How about Jeff Bezos? 0.98%. Michael Bloomberg? 1.30%. Uh, how about Elon Musk in the long term? So not just in 2018, but over like a 5 or 10 year period. His true tax rate was 3.27%. So hey, credit to Elon. He paid a little bit more than a lot of the other douchebags who are billionaires who rigged the rules. Good on you, man. But what happened is I think Elon finally figured out in like 2018, oh, I can pay nothing. Let me just do this Weasley trick, which is technically legal, which clearly shouldn't be legal. So understand, guys, dude made, he had the largest wealth increase in a single day in history. He, he made $36 billion in one day. And either on the same day or the day after, he's on Twitter saying, don't tax me more because I'm worried about, uh, you know, random Joe Schmo who makes 60K a year having to pay more in taxes if you tax me more. Come on, son. 36 billion in one day? And, and you say, don't you dare raise taxes on me? The market cap for Tesla went over a trillion a trillion. They, it made Elon Musk the richest person, not just in the world, in human history. And on the same day, he's like, don't raise my taxes. Don't raise my taxes. There was an article recently for with 2% of Elon Musk's wealth, you can eliminate world hunger. Did you know that um, nearly 50% of the world population lives on less than $5.50 per day? Homeboy just made $36 billion in one day, and he's like, don't you dare raise my taxes even a little bit. I mean, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. So to give you guys a little bit more information, um, a report came out the other day from the Institute for Policy Studies. America's billionaires, their wealth has grown $2.1 trillion during the pandemic. So that's... a uh, Collectively, their wealth has skyrocketed by 70%. And at the same time, 89 million Americans have lost their jobs. Now, beyond that, there was a report from a few years back uh, that I want to share with you guys. And I, bring, I brought this up before, but I feel like it's totally pertinent to the conversation we're having now. The top 1% of Americans have taken $50 trillion from the bottom 90%. So this is from 2018. Take a look. This is in Time Magazine. Groundbreaking new working paper by Carter C. Price and Catherine Edwards of the Rand Corporation had, had the more equitable income distributions of the three decades following World War II, 1945 through 1974, merely held steady. The aggregate annual income of Americans earning below the 90th percentile would have been $2.5 trillion higher in the year 2018 alone. That is an amount equal to nearly 12% of GDP, enough to more than double median income, enough to pay every single working American in the bottom nine deciles an additional $1,144 a month, every month, every single year. Price and Edwards calculate that the cumulative tab for our four-decade-long experiment in radical inequality had grown to over $47 trillion from 1975 through 2018. At a recent pace of about $2.5 trillion a year, that number, we estimate, crossed the $50 trillion mark by early 2020. That's $50 trillion that would have gone into the paychecks of working Americans had inequality held constant. $50 trillion that would have built a far larger and more prosperous economy. $50 trillion that would have enabled the vast majority of Americans to enter this pandemic far more healthy, resilient, and financially secure. 
do you understand what's being said? If you look at the income inequality, the wealth inequality, the, the pay ratio, the wealth ratio between the top 10% and the bottom 90% in what's called the golden age of economic expansion in the U.S. when we were the only game in town. So from after World War II all the way until 1975. If you just keep the pay discrepancy and the wealth discrepancy steady from then until today, every single American in the bottom 90% has $1,145 excuse me, $1,144 more per month every month every year of your life. So effectively, because the rules have been rigged, because the wealthy and corporations have bought the government and rigged the rules in their favor in a variety of different ways, because the rules have been rigged, the top 10% has taken 50 trillion, now it's like 51 or 52 trillion for 2021, from the bottom 90%. Do, need I say any more? Need I say any more? We live in a time of such amazing income and wealth inequality that it's beyond the gilded age. And Elon Musk is on Twitter saying, don't tax me more even though I just made $36 billion in one day and the market cap for Tesla is over $1 trillion because Hertz decided to buy a bunch of Teslas. It's a, it's a sick joke, man. It's a sick joke. Imagine the selfishness and the greed to get you as a billionaire to make that case, and for the average person to side with Musk on this, imagine the years and years of Kool-Aid drinking and ideological brainwashing that get you to the point that you're against the most common sense idea of all, which is, yes, redistribution of wealth. Nobody's talking about redistributing so everybody gets exactly the same amount. Nobody ever said that. Nobody would argue for that. If they did, they'd be insane. But, should we live in a country where 30 million people don't have health care? Should we live in a country where medical bills are the top cause of bankruptcy and 45,000 45, people die every year because they don't have basic health care? Should we live in a country where 78% of Americans live paycheck to paycheck? Half of working people make $30,000 a year or less? Should we live in a country with over $1.7 trillion in student loan debt? Should we live in that country? At the same time, just a handful of people are getting this wealthy? No. I think you know the answer to that. You need redistributive policies. You need to tax the wealthy. You need to provide people with the basics. You know, uh, universal education, including higher education, college, uh, universal daycare, universal health care, a living wage, unions. Something's got to be done to fight back against this because this is as extreme as it gets. Hey y'all, do me a favor and like and subscribe. It helps out big time in the algorithm. Click the bell as well for notifications when videos drop. And watch that video on screen right now. You know you want to.